Greetings from First Missionary Baptist Church of Cave Springs, Arkansas. My prayer for you today is that you would find the joy of the Lord. In our lives, we should reflect joy in our hope in eternal salvation, our hope for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, our hope for the forgiveness of sin. All these things boil down to we should have a smile on our face as we met, meet the world. Well, this joy can never be taken away and will never end in the very presence of the Lord Jesus Christ throughout eternity. We see in our narrative of Samson that his great strength was actually the strength, the supernatural strength of the Lord. We also have a supernatural strength through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And of course, then in Nehemiah chapter eight, verse 10, he said to the people, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. If we depend wholly on him, we have a strength that overcomes the world. In our study of Samson, we see tragedy mixed with triumph and mercy, and that mercy then mixed with judgment. Numbers 32 and 23, as we've said before, beware, your sin will find you out. Well, what was the root of Samson's sin? His obsession with uh, anger, revenge, vengeance that he took upon himself. But it all begins with the lust of the flesh. He had an obsession with women. His lust for women was his downfall. And in our study today, which will be Judges chapter 16, verses 30, uh, 21 through 31, we see a very demeaning end. Uh, a great man comes to a terrible end. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we look at Samson's life, Lord God, we use it as an example for our own lives that to seek, seek out those things that are praiseable to us and it's out of, out of your will. Lord God, there can be nothing but a disastrous end, judgment. But of course, we look to our deliverer, who is the Lord Jesus Christ, who is perfect. He is our example for life. He is our example for worship. He is our example for total obedience. And Lord God, as we look at this man for the last time, we see all his efforts come to a sad end, yet God still used him even in the end. Help us, Lord, to look to you for all things. Forgive me my sin, in Jesus' name, amen. In our study today, we see the death of Samson, a very demeaning end. So let's read in, uh, in sections. We'll start with verses 21 and 22 in our study of chapter 16, verses 21 through 31. But the Philistines took him, put out his eyes, brought him down to Gaza, and bound him with fetters of brass, and he did grind in the prison house. However, the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. At the deceit of an ungodly woman, we go back to verse 20, we see that she tricked him, had his hair cut off, and when he woke out of his sleep, he said, I will go out and do as I've always done. He didn't know that the Lord was departed from him. That horrible state of affairs when God sets us out into the world on our own without his protection. The last badge of Samson's relationship with God his hair is shaved off, that badge of a Nazarite. Well, let's look at that clear, closely. His hair was not the reason of his great strength. It was merely a sign, an outward show of his dedication to the Lord. And as long as he had that dedication to the Lord, God was with him. Verse 20 shows us that when his hair was removed, the Lord departed from him. The Lord was his strength. In our own lives as believers, indwelled with the Holy Spirit, 
we also have a relationship, a fellowship with our Lord Jesus Christ, with our God, our Father in heaven. And when we sin, we break that relationship, that fellowship. We lose that strength of the Lord. Our witness is compromised. Our very lives are affected. Yet, God doesn't leave us or forsake us. Through his infinite grace and mercy, he seeks to rebuild that relationship and fellowship. Well, how does he do that? 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. We sin, we should recognize it, we should ask forgiveness for it, we should depart from it, cleanse it out of our lives, and show the Lord that we are sorry for our sin, he then restores the fellowship with us. Samson's sin found him out, and the consequences were dire. The Philistines put out his eyes. Samson's eyes, his weakness from the beginning was his eyes. He looked about in chapter 14, verse 1, and said he saw... Samson went to down to Timnath and saw a woman. He saw her beauty. He saw her enticement. He came back to his folks and said, get her for me to wife. We see the history of the period of judges summed up in the last verse of the book. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Well, those eyes were now gouged out of Samson. And, of course, his strength was gone. He was absolutely helpless. First John 2.16 lists the downfall of mankind with all that we see in Samson. He said, for all, this is First John 2.16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, the lust of the eyes, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Be very careful what you look at, how you speak, how you carry your character, your attitude in the world. We are to be examples of the Lord Jesus Christ simply because we have his Holy Spirit indwelling within us as believers. Verse 21, first he loses his eyes, then he loses all pride, chained and imprisoned, grinding grain for the prison, the lowest position of a slave, the most demeaning chore that he could do. Women slaves usually were assigned that project. But in verse 22, there's hope. His hair begins to grow again. You see, God's spirit departed from him, but God has not forsaken him. Verses 23 through 27. Then the lords of the Philistines gathered them together for to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon, their god, and to rejoice. For they said, Our god had delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hand. And when the people saw him, Samson, they praised their god. For they said, Our god had delivered into our hands our enemy and the destroyer of our country, which slew many of us. And it came to pass, when their hearts were merry, that they said, Call for Samson that he may make us sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house, and he made them sport, and they set him between the fillers. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me that I may feel the pillars whereupon the house stead, that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there. And there were upon the roof about three thousand men and women that beheld while Samson made sport. What a situation, the humiliation of it. This strong, superly, supernaturally endowed man, now cringing, blind, had to be led about with a young child and being humiliated, spat upon, beat upon, mocked. Every humiliation that man could stand, he was there in front of all these lords. Well, all these five lords of the Philistines are there after they captured Samson. They're celebrating. 
they're uh, giving sacrifice to their god Dagon said you're the one that brought him to us you're the one that captured him you're the victor and they were honoring their god Dagon who supposedly delivered them from Samson well that of course is a direct affront to the one and only God Jehovah he states you shall not have any gods before me verse 24 what did it say when the people saw him they praised their God for they said our God had delivered into our hands our enemy and the destroyer of our country which slew many of us here we see these lords of the Philistines. They're the same ones that paid Delilah to deceive Samson and to turn them, turn him over into their hands. Uh, in their drunken revelry, they commanded that Samson, their enemy who killed a thousand and thirty men to begin with, and then had destroyed their whole economy with fire, they commanded he brought to them so they could mock him, make sport of him, to gloat over him in his devastation. Pure humiliation. They are in the temple of Dega. Archaeologists in 1972 discovered a Philistine temple at a place called Tel Quaz in Israel today. It was a structure of sun-baked brick set on a stone foundation and with a central hall with a roof of logs across it, supporting a roof by two wooden pillars set on round stones. Isn't it amazing how the writer of this book of Judges showed us a picture of something that we didn't see until 1900 years later. But it is a temple of Dagon and it shows us exactly in the Bible what Samson did with those two pillars that were set on these round stones. Verse 27, Samson was put on display between those pillars. The lords of the Philistines and their entourage on the ground floor and then 3,000 men and women situated on the roof observing all this entertainment with Samson. We'll read verses 28 and 29. Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me. Remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me. I pray thee only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood and on which it was borne up, of the one with his right hand and the other with his left. We see Samson's prayer the prayer of Samson. Samson has been totally humbled. Sometimes we have to be brought to that same position before God, before we actually say, Lord God, I've sinned and I need forgiveness. The Bible tells us we can only approach God by humbling ourselves. And he calls unto the Lord. The Bible also tells us that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, but Samson, he's still Samson. He said, Lord, give me your strength one more time that I may be avenged for my eyes. And he puts his hands on the two pillars. Yes, he was humble. Yes, he turned back to God and asked for his strength back. It was kind of a left-handed type of humbling before God, but he did humble himself. And God respects that. But we shall see that God uses this opportunity to judge the Philistines one more time. But he doesn't save Samson. Samson is a sacrifice. Look at verses 30. Well, verse 30 by itself. Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might. And the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. God hears Samson's prayer for mercy, and he accepts Samson's sacrifice. God uses Samson, 
this last time to wreck the temple of Dagon. No God of this earth is going to be superior to God at any time in any way. God uses Samson this last time, killing all in the wreckage. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than he slew in his life. God's purpose in Samson was to judge the Philistines, and judge them he did. That was accomplished, yet Samson had to be judged for his sin. He had to be judged for all the sin that he had done in his life. And the wages of sin is death. We find that in Romans 3 and 23. Yet, in Hebrews chapter 11 and 32, Samson is listed as one of the heroes of faith. Samson believed God, and as it was done or said of Abraham, it was counted to him for righteousness. Samson died, but he died in the service for the Lord. You see, he could not live through without judgment. All his sin had to be, key, had to be judged. Well, the key here, why was he accounted righteous? He prayed for mercy and then sacrificed his life in the name of God, the one true God. The book of Judges is filled with the history of so many judges, deliverers they're called. If you have been following my feeble attempts at prevent, presenting God's word, we should know we now have the deliverer, Jesus Christ. He is our deliverer. He's our savior. He's our coming king. He came to save us from our sins. Jesus is the perfect sinless deliverer. Samson was a great sinner and his deliverance was hindered. Samson was a, uh, hindered. Jesus, our deliverer, is sinless. His deliverance is eternal. I'd like to show you today some of the parallels of this narrative with our true deliverer, Jesus. These are statements of many uh, preachers and teachers already gone on to their reward. They're with the Lord Jesus Christ. They are there being awarded for their work in the Lord on this earth. So I borrow some of their statements, those that I totally agree with, and I present them to you because God wrote this book of his word to ultimately point to Jesus Christ as the only sacrifice, the only savior that we need to see. So let's see Samson first as the sinful deliverer. We see his great strength chosen by God. In, verse, uh, in chapter 13, verse 5, it's, it starts out, it says, he shall begin to deliver Israel. Israel is still being delivered today. We are helping by pointing to the Lord Jesus Christ. As many as we can bring into the kingdom of God, they will have eternal life. They will be delivered. In the end, Israel will be delivered also. Well, the second thing we see is the basis for his strength. It wasn't really his hair. The hair was just a sign of, of his dedication but the Spirit of the Lord began to move him, it says in 13, verse 25. It was the Spirit of the Lord that gave him that strength. And then the third thing, we see Samson's failure. Women, lust. Judges 16 and 20, it says, He did not know the Lord was now departed from him. He had forgotten that his strength was of the Lord. Now let's look at some parallels with our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Samson and Jesus. Both births were uh, foretold by an angel. They were both foretold to their parents that he would be coming, that he would be the deliverer. Both were separated to God from the womb. Both moved in the power of the Holy Spirit. Both were rejected by their people. And both destroyed, and in our case will destroy, their enemies. Now the contrast. Let's look at Samson. He lived a life of sin. Jesus Christ is sinless. Never sinned. 
Number two, at death, Samson prayed to be avenged of his two eyes. Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. There's a big difference between a sinful deliverer and a sinless deliverer. Number three, Samson. In death, Samson's arms stretched out in vengeance. In death, Jesus in his death stretched out his arms were stretched out on the cross in love. And then we see the fourth part, which we'll read in verse 31, Samson died. Then his brethren and all the house of his father came down, took him and brought him up, buried him between Zorah and Eshtel in the burying place of Manoah, his father. And he judged Israel 20 years. It was a simple, short period of judgment and deliverance. Contrast, Jesus Christ lives. He died, was buried, rose again the third day, and he's risen into everlasting life, and he calls all that would believe in him to be living with him for eternity. So we conclude that Jesus Christ is the one to put our hope in. We live in a sinful world which advocates a sinful lifestyle. The world banks on the lusts of the flesh and the pride of life and the, and the lust of the eyes. That's what drives the whole world society without the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That leaves no one out. We're all under the curse of sin. Romans 3.10 says, There is none righteous. Romans 5, 8 says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 10, 9 through 13. Let's go there and read that. It's so very important. We can't just skip over it. Romans 9, starting with verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and shalt believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. It's all about faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's so important to us in the world today. We're given an opportunity while we're still alive to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. So don't put it off. There is a remedy for sin. 2 Corinthians 6 and 2 in part says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. It is time, right this moment, in every person's heart. Tomorrow may not come. Tomorrow may be too late. You may be on a roof somewhere that collapses like the Philistines did. It was too late for them. We <laughs> have a day today to come to Jesus. Today, if you're living in sin, ask God to forgive that sin and mean it. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, lest any man should boast. Samson was a boastful man, and it got him nowhere. We today, if we boast in our own, in our own powers, we have got a chance. We are to only bring glory to the Father in heaven, who can do all things. And the Lord Jesus Christ came, gave his life, died in my place, so that if I believe in him, I shall also have everlasting life. Today, if you're living in sin, ask, pray that prayer. Say, Lord God, I'm just a sinner in need of salvation and forgiveness. Ephesians, well, we just read Ephesians 8 and 9, and if you're saved but have strayed from God, come back to God.
God is merciful and he will forgive and restore you. Remember 1 John uh, 1 and 9. It says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. There's the key. God is merciful, he's gracious, and he's forgiving, and he loves us. All he asks is that we humble ourselves before him and admit that we are leading a sinful life. And though it may affect us, because the consequences of sin is death, there is a resurrection. When God comes back to us. He promised never to leave us nor forsake us. We are his children. Sinful though we are, he gives us the opportunity to come back to him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for your word and what it has in store for us, the questions that we ask in our humiliation and in our pride and in our lust. We always ask, what's the meaning of all this? God has the answer. Let us stay in your word and thank you for it. Forgive me, Lord, my sin. In Jesus' name we now pray. Amen.